Hello and welcome. So my name is Bobby Seagull, Mr. Seagull, the school maths teacher. I'm the author of a couple of books called uh, The Life-Changing Magic of Numbers, How Numbers Change My Life, and also the author of uh, the Monkman and Seagull quiz book, and, and the presenter for the BBC TV series Monkman and Seagull's Genius Adventures. So I'll tell you more about that. We had episode one on Monday, episode two is coming out next Monday, and I'll talk more about that later. But the reason I'm here today, boys and girls, is because Thursday, Thursday 10.45 means one thing. It means history by numbers time. And today, and today, we're looking at the Aztecs. The Aztecs, they're such a fascinating civilization. So they existed about 700 years ago. So about 700 years ago, the Aztecs, and they actually were at the peak of their civilization for about 200 years. So for about 200 years, from about 13, 1200s to 1400s, 1200s to 1400s, or 1500s rather. And at one stage, they had 12 million people, 12 million people as part of their vast empire. So we're gonna be looking into this culture and I'm so excited. But a quick bit about what we're doing today. So we're part of Home Festival, Home Festival, an amazing program of activities set up by our wonderful, wonderful people here. Um, OT, Marius, um, David and Karen. And at 11.30 after me, OT and Marius are doing a, a family dance class. Family dance class, always great. Then I, I don't think this uh, cat here up cycling at 12.15. Maybe that's a mistake by me. Um, Bryony's got makeup tutorial at three o'clock. Then Faye is carrying on reading Narnia which is brilliant because I know that she's got to the point of Edmund. Edmund is getting involved in the story. And then at 7.30, Jenny Thomas is doing a dance. Thank you, Jenny Thomas, special guest. And at 8.30, Neil Jones with the isolation quiz, getting ready to test your brains and test your knowledge. So I'm gonna just make sure that I can try and see a couple of Facebook comments, a couple of Facebook comments coming for me. Um, let's, let's, let's move on, let's have a look. So. I'm going to bring up some of the homework, but the homework is always brilliant to see. Always brilliant to see. So there you go, that's the schedule for today. And look at the amazing homework we have this week. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. We've got Cassius joining us today, and Dorothy. Hello, welcome. And anyone else uh, Anyone else on my page? Let's have a look. On Instagram, we've got Louie, got Kirsty, got Margarita, got Amy Bushwell. Um, I love seeing people joining my classes because it means that people are engaged with learning about fun things. So see, these are some of the homeworks we had. So we had a brilliant response. I think I've gone too far on my YouTube, hold on. There we go. There we go, there we go. So Oscar uh, for Belgium produced a wonderful poster on Tintin and the Corona Cure. Thank you, Oscar. And then Carrie uh, got dressed for our ancient Greek dancing. I think it was a Belgian folk dancing and did a poster from Belgium. And thank you, Millie16, who wrote a story about um, Tintin and how hopefully you'll get back to normal life. So thank you. So if you've got homework, please send them through to me at Bobby underscore Seagull on Instagram and at Bobby underscore Seagull on Twitter. So I think we're ready to look at the lesson for today. Let's have a look. So this is the, the itinerary. So history by numbers. We're going to look at Tenochtitlan, the capital of the Aztec culture. Then we've got, we're looking at chocolate, chocolate. Then obviously, obviously Aztec dance, then some counting, then some counting in the language, then look at the end of the Aztecs, because obviously they, they rose and then they fell. And then finally, we know the normal drill, homework with Bobby, do draw or dance, quiz with Bobby, so make sure you're paying attention, and then thoughts of Mr. Seagull. So here we go, so hello to my uncle Joseph Alexander, hello Maya, um, lots of people here today, as we'd hope, as we'd hope. Uh, so I'm going to move the mic closer to me. Apparently it's not very loud. I'll move the mic. So hopefully you can hear it. I'm going to move the mic closer to me. Okay, so. Um, oh, apparently it's uh, Karina, not Carrie. My mistake. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so. This is our journey today, our journey. We're going to go to Mexico. But we're going to be traveling back 700 years in the past. So we're gonna do some time traveling in a second, but a bit of facts about the place. So the Aztecs 
Do you know the name? They didn't call themselves Aztecs because the name Aztec just means, I think, wandering people or someone from a place called Aztlan. But they call themselves the Mexica. As you can see there, Mexica or Mexica. And you're wondering, Ms. Siga, I know that name. That sounds familiar. So when they call themselves Mexica or Mexica, the people, that gives its name to modern day Mexico. So they call, so if they were around today, they would say we are the Mexica or Mexica, but we call them the Aztecs. So actually a different name to what they call themselves. And if you look at the Mexico flag, can you see the flag? There's an eagle having a snake or a serpent in its mouth on top of a prickly, on top of a prickly item. On top of a prickly item. And you know why that is? There's going to be a story behind that. There's going to be a story behind that. Because at one stage, someone had a vision that there would be an eagle fighting a serpent on a prickly thing. And there is where they would find and found their city. Okay, we're going to travel 700 years in the past. Are you ready to come time travelling with me? Are you ready to come time travelling? Cassius, are you ready? Are you ready? We're going to go, we're going to go back into the past. Okay, so anyone, parents in particular, have you watched Back to the Future? I'm sure you have. Every history class, we go back in the future. So we're going to get into a DeLorean. We're going to get into a DeLorean. I'm going to get the outfit ready because if I'm going to go in the past, I need to make sure I get my outfit. Are you ready? I'm going to put my jacket on. Oh, my 80s style jacket. I'm going to get my, um, my glasses on. Are you ready? We're going to try traveling into the past. Eight, we're going to be traveling 700 years past. So I'm going to get in the, in the DeLorean car. Are you in? Are you strapped in? Okay. Yeah, we're going to get the speed on. 50 miles, 60, 70, 80, 88, 1.21 gigawatts. And we're spinning. We've gone back 700 years in the past. We are now in ancient Mexico. Welcome. Welcome. We're here. Ooh. My phone doesn't seem to work anymore. My signal doesn't work, of course, because we're, we've traveled back and past. So we've gone. How far have we gone? We've traveled. 5,500 miles from London, UK, to Mexico. We've travelled across the world, but we're also 700 years back in the past. Back in the past. So let's go to their capital city. So we are in Tenoch, Tenochtitlan. Tenochtitlan. So this is their capital. And I'll tell you what their capital means. It's got a funny meaning. It means among the prickly pears. Do you know the word prickly? Do you know I mentioned the word prickly? Among the prickly pears. And I'll tell you why that's important. Because do you remember the Mexico flag had a eagle with a snake on a prickly substance, on a prickly cactus. So the Aztec people, although they were called the Mexica to themselves, they believed that they should find their city, the capital, where they found this vision. And they found this vision in what's modern day Mexico. And if you look at that, can you see the image on the top left? That essentially is a marshy island. And it's on the edge of a place called Lake Texcoco. And the Mexicans, or the Aztecs, they had lots of islands. They had one natural one in the middle, and they built lots of floating ones. And what was smart is, you know how they connected them? They connected them using causeways. So these are like roads, but that you build up. And they had canals. So almost like a floating city. And I've heard people describe it as the Venice of Central America. Although it's a different era, but it's that I, that's the concept of having a canal connected place. And that was Tenochtitlan. And if you look, if you come to my Egyptians classes, they loved building pyramids. They loved building pyramids. And in modern day, in modern day Mexico, they found this about 30 years ago, 30, 40 years ago. So you can see the image on the top middle. So you can see the, the back part of modern day Mexico. And they discovered Tenochtitlan. And they knew, yes, we knew it was founded in Mexico City. So Tenochtitlan was the capital of this vast Aztec empire around Central America. But the pyramids, you're wondering what are the pyramids for? And this is going to be part of your homework. So the Mexicans, or the Aztecs, I keep calling the Mexicans, the Aztecs. The Aztecs, I'm gonna write this for you. It's not gonna be in your test. But they had a, a sun god, I know it's called Hu, H-U-I, <laughs> Hu, I-T-Z-I, I, I don't need some more, Hootsi, then it's uh, Hootsi-Lo, Hootsi-Lo, 
Poctli, Hutzelo, this is all one name. They had a sun god called Hutzelo Poctli, and again, it's a bit blurry to see, but Hutzelo Poctli. And this god was the sun god. And they believed that the world would end unless they appeased him. And do you know how they appeased him? Appeased him means make him happy. They had to sacrifice people. So there were people, up to a thousand a day, who were sacrificed in the top. And it's a bit grim, so if you're, if you're not PT, close your eyes for a second. Close your eyes, close your ears. They take their heart out. Anyway, they did that, they sacrificed lots of people. Often people they'd capture in war. So that was something a bit about grim about the Aztecs, but it was part of their culture. Part of their culture. Um, and it's something that we should, we should acknowledge. Even though there's cool bits of their culture, there's also bits about their culture which are, I guess, we would consider a bit unsavory sacrifices. So that's Tenochtitlan, um, and it still exists today. You can go and find it, bits of it. You can find bits near Mexico City and some ancient parts in the capital city itself. So now, are you feeling peckish? You know, we've traveled back 700 years into the past, Mayuri. Um, surely, uh, Cassius, you feel like you're wanting a snack, don't you? You want a snack, people? I want a snack, yeah? Okay, so, time for a snack. It's time for some chocolate. Time for some chocolate. So, chocolate is from something called a cacao or cocoa bean. And they used to love this in the Aztec culture. But, let's have a look. So this is a, I've got a chocolate covered rice cake. Am I gonna eat it a bit now? I'll eat a bit later. But we, we tend to eat the chocolate. But the Aztecs, what was popular for them was, they would drink chocolate. And that was the most popular way for them to consume chocolate. It would be drinking chocolate. And do you know what? They used chocolate as a way of sometimes exchanging goods. It was considered almost like money. So imagine that, you're going to a shop in, uh, in, in Tenochtitlan, and you're going to buy something, and you got, you're getting your money out, and you're like, oh, oh no, it's all melted. But it wasn't like our chocolate because it was they'd kept the cocoa beans and they'd use it as drinking chocolate. But it was uh, the addition of vanilla later. So when the Spanish came later on, they made it very sweet because the Aztecs like really bitter chocolate. Although to be honest, hands up, probably the parents and carers, I like dark chocolate. The sweet one's too sweet for me. Yeah, so that photo of people, um, it shows them having drinking chocolate there. So again, it's amazing that the Central Americans, they created the culture of drinking hot chocolate. So every time you have a hot chocolate, go and say, thank you Aztec people. It was them. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have your lovely cup of hot chocolate. So now it's, um, we're approaching the middle, normally around 11. You know what time it is? It's time for dance. So the dance we're gonna to learn today, I think it's called Concheros, Concheros. So it's like a modern day adaptation of what we think the Aztecs did. Because nowadays, dances, you know, they're all on TikTok and on YouTube, but back then, they're only pictures. We haven't actually seen it. So we're gonna look at a, a dance. I'm gonna get into my outfit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, take, I've got my, I've got a pink. Um, I'm gonna put, put something on, I'm gonna put something on. Let's have a look. I need, I need more flowery items, but let's go for this. Okay, so, um, are you ready for your learning the dance? Are you ready for learning a dance? Okay, so we're gonna learn Aztec dance, Aztec dance. I'm very excited about Aztec dance. Okay, so you can see that this is a modern interpretation of it. A modern interpretation of it. Okay, let's get it on. Let's get the Aztec dance on. Are you excited? I'm very excited.
thank you, Aztec Dance. And now we're going to do some counting. So, the Aztec language in its original version doesn't really exist now. But what we do have is something called Nohatl. No, Nohatl. Nohatl. And this is a modern day language spoken by about a million people, which is an equivalent of the Aztec language. It's called Nahuatl. And we're going to count to five. You know the drill. So let's count to five for me. So one is say, say, then ome, ome, then yay, almost like yay, yay, then nahui, nahui, then makuli, makuli. Let's do that again. Say, say, ome, ome, yay. Yay! Nahui! Nahui! Makuli! Makuli! Can you, can you hear that? Hopefully you can hear me. Hopefully you can hear me. I think you can hear me. Okay, so we're gonna go through, we're gonna go through it again. Let me double check. Someone's saying they can't hear me. Let me... Okay, I think you can hear me. Okay, so remember, let's go there. Say! Ome! Yay! Nahui! Makuli! Let's count down! Makuli! Nahui! Yay! Ome! Say! Okay, okay, so, um, someone on uh, YouTube is saying the first chocolate was in Serbia, not in Aztecs. So I think one of the things about history is, is that it's very difficult for us to say this is the first person or the first culture because different cultures will claim to have different times of having discovered or invented something but we know it's one of the first so we know it's one of the first for sure so for example we can say that Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon but other things like who's the first person to write a book who's the first person to sing a song it's not always clear but we know the Aztecs were definitely one of the first to have uh, chocolate especially drinking chocolate Okay, so let's do some let's do some calculations. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna do is if I said ome plus ome, what's that? Ome plus ome is nahui. Okay, good. If I said makuli minus nahui, makuli minus nahui. Say good. Okay, I'm gonna give you a tricky one here. Uh, ooh, what am I going to do? Ome times ome plus se. Ooh, that's a tricky one. Ome times ome plus se. What's that? Makuli. Makuli. Because it's two plus two times two plus one. Okay, you got, you got your numbers? Let's do it one more time. Se. Ome. Ye. Nahui. Makuli. Yeah, you got that? Okay. Um, that, that's our numbers. That's our numbers. I think I feel confident with the numbers. So if you're on Instagram, I think the Facebook and YouTube streams are much better. Facebook and YouTube streams are much better. So now we're going to look at Montezuma and Cortez. Montezuma and Cortez. So Montezuma the second is the man that you see in that amazing dress. Montezuma is the man you see in the amazing dress. And he was, sadly, the last emperor of the Aztecs. So Cortes was a Spanish man. And he came over with people called the conquistadors. The conquerors or the adventurers. They came over from Spain in 1519. So 1519. I'll put that on the board. 1519. And sadly, it wasn't a peaceful mission. They came to conquer. They came to conquer, so 1519, I'll put it up here clearly so you can see, 1519. And their mission was to take over the lands of these people. And what was sad is that there were elements where Cortes was tricked. Cortes tricked um, Montezuma. And ultimately, by 1521, Montezuma, after he was put in prison, ended up being killed, possibly by his own people. And it's like really sad to see the Aztecs, they'd grown over a couple hundred years to 12 million civilization and very quickly, within two years, they dropped off without a trace almost. And it's actually probably in history 
one of the fastest drops of any civilization. And Cortes and the Spanish conquistadors were part of the reason behind that. And actually, even when Cortes left, the, the natives, the Aztecs, actually developed things like smallpox, diseases that the Spanish brought over. And when you think of modern Spain or modern Mexico now, so again, people joining me on Instagram, um, I think if you go to the, in, the Home Festival Facebook, Home Festival Facebook, so it's Home Festival Fun, it's much better on Facebook or on my YouTube channel. It's not so great on Instagram, I'm sorry. Um, so, uh, it dropped off so very quickly. And it's, it's really sad because a culture that grew up very quickly, it can show you how things can happen in such a short period of time when we're looking at world history. So uh, Montezuma is the last of the Aztec um, leaders. And now what we're left with is we have the relics. We see the relics. We see in Mexico City some of the pyramids. And if you think about it, Mexico, what's the language of Mexico? Spanish. In fact, Mexico has the most number of Spanish speakers in the world. But back then, it was a language, was it? Nuhatl, Nuhatl. And you know, we learned the language of the numbers. So there you go. So that is, um, that is uh, Mexico for the Aztecs. Rather. I keep saying, calling it Mexico. So now it's time for your homework. So I'm going to say your homework. So three tasks. Either you can research Aztec gods. Because there are lots of them. Remember the one I said? The really long one? What was it called? Hutzli Pochtli. You can research that. Or secondly, you can draw a poster of three things that you've learned in the class. Or you can send me a dance, a video, again on my Twitter at Bobby underscore Seagull, on my Instagram, my Facebook. I even have TikTok or my YouTube channel. Send me somewhere a video of your dance. So don't forget, homework with Bobby. Now it's time for your quiz. Are you ready? Have you been paying attention? Have you been listening? I'm going to be testing. Are you ready? Are you ready for the quiz? You ready? Yeah. Well, the year is a number as well. Okay, let's have a look. So here's your quiz. Here is your quiz. Here is your quiz. So, this is early on. What was the original name of the Aztec people? What was the original name of the Aztec people? Question number two. What was the popular way to consume chocolate for the Aztecs? What was the popular way to consume chocolate for the Aztecs? And number three, what was the name of the Spanish conqueror of the Aztecs? What was the name of the Spanish conqueror of the Aztecs? Okay, let's, let's see, come on, let's see what answers you have. Let me see your answers. Um, Mayuri's got one of them correct, so the popular way to consume chocolate was drinking it, was drinking it. Anyone else? Anyone else? So question, that's question number two. We've got question one and three to go. Question one and three. So, the original name for the Aztecs was, remember I did this early on, it's called the Mexica or Mexica. Mexica. So, Mexica, I'll write down, Mexica or the Mexica. And that's where we get the modern name of Mexico, Mexica. And the third one, Cassius, do you know what the third one is? What is the name of the Spanish conqueror? We should know that, the Spanish conqueror. Let's see the Spanish conqueror. So Montezuma was the last emperor. And is it Millie saying, Millie, well done. Millie and Snazzy quizzes have got it correct. It's Hernan Cortes. So he was the conqueror. So I think, I feel confident that we've known, uh, we know about... Um, Aztecs. We know about the Aztecs. Again, a really interesting civilization. They did a lot of human sacrifices, but also they understood about the planets and eclipses uh, and solar planetary movements. So they were quite, you know, they knew their stuff. So it's time for, uh, well done Cassius. Cassius got it correct too. So now time for Thoughts of Mr. Seagull. I do this every session. I do this every session. So take a deep breath. You know, we've had some excitement. We're going to come back to the dance. So take a breath for me first of all. Stand shoulders, uh, feet shoulders width apart. Take a deep breath and breathe out. Breathe in. Right to the bottom of your lungs and breathe out. Okay, so today's thought is similar to the one I did last week. So yesterday was thank a teacher day. And recently, again, you, you all know I say this all the time, I won Celebrity Mastermind 
uh, and my topic was England at Football World Cups. So the FA, the Football Association, they invited me to take part in a quiz against Gareth Southgate. I guess we won. I think Gareth Southgate, the England manager, on a quiz about England. But anyway, I had a chat with Gareth at the end of the uh, quiz and I spoke to him about advice he'd give to young people. So to students and I think to adults as well. And the advice he gave was, don't compare yourself to others. Be the best version of yourself. To compete against yourself. Try and be, again, we have ups and downs. Try and be better than you were last time, but don't compare yourself to others. Because he said, if someone's really got a particular subject or if your friend's got a really nice car, if you compare yourself to them, if you go and check their Facebook, check their Instagram, you think, oh, their lives look amazing. Don't do that. Compare yourself to yourself. Try and be more positive about yourself. And again, if this is Gal Southgate, I think one of the most inspirational leaders out there. If he says that, I'm going to believe him. So there you go. Don't compare yourself to others. That's my thoughts of Mr. Seagull for today. So, um, we've got about a few minutes left. Uh, we've got my Monkman and Seagull TV series is out. Episode one. It's called Monkman and Seagull's Genius Adventures. Three episodes, one hour each, where me and my friend from Universe Challenge, we drive around the UK exploring science and history from 1750 to 1900. So you'll love it. I'm going to show you a trailer for episode two. So if you missed episode one, it's on BBC iPlayer. Watch it, honestly, tell me your feedback. We love people to see it. And episode two is on Monday at nine o'clock on BBC Two. Honestly, it's like educational and fun at the same time. A bit like me, a bit like me. Okay, let's have a look at this trailer. Let me find it if I can get it up. Who's Ed Sheeran? Who is Ed Sheeran? Honestly, what what kind of question is that? Okay, to be honest, that guy there, Frank James, is a phenomenal science communicator, but he didn't know who Ed Sheeran was. If you want, if you want to know who Ed Sheeran is, come and watch on Monday at nine o'clock. Um, okay, so we're going to be back in business in a second. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, so on. Um, I'm using my mic. I'm going to speak into my mic. So, uh, oh, I think, can you hear me? I hope you can hear me. Okay, so uh, on Saturday at five o'clock, you can see I'm doing my quiz again. I'm doing my quiz. Um, family quiz, music, uh, charades, uh, pictures, um, a sing-along. Last week we did, I think we did Frozen. Let it go, let it go, can't hold me back anymore. Well, more of that. Um, thank you so much to Maya said she's seen it. Um, Maya she says she's seen it. So I'm glad you're enjoying my uh, quizzes. So every Saturday, it's five o'clock this week. It could change, but come along. Follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Bobby underscore Seagull. Um, and again, if you're enjoying these lessons, please send in your homework. We love for you to see your homework. Okay, let's see what the schedule is for the rest of the day. So we've got um, Oti and Marius. We've got a family dance class. Um, then Katty, I think that's not on today. Then Bryony Blake's got a makeup tutorial. Then Faye tells us continuing with uh, Narnia. And Faye, we're so privileged to have her. She's an amazing singer from Steps. And she's a strictly finalist. Then at 7.30, you've got Jenny Thomas doing a dance. Special guest, welcome. And then Neil Jones with his isolation quiz. Neil had his birthday recently on May the 4th. So happy belated birthday, Neil. So now, I think it's time for... We're going to uh, end off with... Um, a dance again. That's all we just do. So can you make sure, uh, boys and girls, uh, that you send me um, either, you know, do, draw, or dance. So either um, do some research about the gods in the Aztec culture, or draw a post of the three things we learned today, or send me a video or picture of your dance, and I'll share it. You see that I love sharing it. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to now get ready for our dance. So I'm Bobby Seagull. It's been a, it's been a great class today. I've got my I need more outfits. Okay, we're gonna end off here. 
We're going to end off here. Let's have a look. Are you ready for some dance? Are you ready for some dance? I'm ready for some dance. Are you ready? Are you ready for some dance? <laughs> 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 <laughs>